Hey, it's Vanessa for Crafty Gemini Creates, and in this video tutorial, I'm gonna teach you how to make these really cute tooth fairy pillows. The front, the mouths part here are little pockets. We gave this little monster guy a funky little mouth, and this little girl here a pretty little bow. So I'm gonna show you how to make all the embellishments and how to make this simple project. So the materials we're gonna be working with are fleece here, and we're gonna stuff them just like you would a little stuffed animal or a softy. They're real simple to make. The first thing you're gonna need is a template. And so I have my templates cut out here. This is just my prototype version, but you guys are going to have a nice pretty little printout that you can click by downloading the, using the link that we've included for you in the description box below. It'll be a one page PDF. It'll include the tooth shape here and then the mouth for the pocket part. So go ahead and print that out. I like to trace it onto cardstock or just make it a little bit sturdier so it's easier to work with. And then you're going to lay these following the lines of the stretch lines on the template pieces to cut out your fabric pieces. So let me show you what the stretch line means. And if you haven't cut fabric before using grain lines and following templates like that, this is an important important thing to note. So fleece stretches more on one side than it does on the other, like most fabrics, okay? So we don't have a selvage here to note, but on the crosswise grain, between selvage to selvage, it stretches the most. So I'm gonna tug on this and I can see that it's quite stretchy. So something is telling me that it's stretching that much, the selvages were on this edge. So this is probably the crosswise grain. Let's compare it to the stretch along the other side. It doesn't stretch quite as much. So this tells me it's the lengthwise grain. So what that means when it comes to our template pieces is that when you're gonna cut out the pieces, you need to lay the fabric so that the stretch orientation of the fabric is in line with the line or the arrow that's on your template piece. So let's check. The stretch here needs to go up and down and that's not right. So if I turn it, and we do it this way, that's correct. So make sure that your stretchiness of your fabric, the side that has the most stretch, is lined up to match the line or the arrow on here. And you're gonna do that for both of your template pieces, okay? So you're gonna cut out two white pieces for the tooth part here, the body of the little pillow itself. And you can see that I have my stretchiest side going up and down along the template, all right? Then for the pocket part, if you're gonna do the pink one here, you can just cut out just one out of whatever color you've decided to use for the front pocket, and that's a simple way to do it. Now I'm gonna show you how to make the bow. So if you're gonna make that one, this is what you're going to do. So the cute little bow here, I've made it in two different colors, and you can see it's so simple and easy. And this is a great little simple project on its own that you can use to embellish other things that you're working on as well. So to make the big part of the bow here, we have cut out a strip of our fleece that measures one and a half inches by six and a half inches in length, okay? And the let me note here something else about noting the wrong and the right side of the fleece. So fleece, the same way that we talked about it stretching, if you tug on it a little bit, it's going to roll usually, right? If you tug on it on the, the stretchiest part, it's gonna roll to the wrong side of the fabric. And on most fleeces, you can kind of tell, the one that looks softer is usually the pretty side of the fabric. So we're gonna lay it with pretty sides touching matching up the raw edges here, and using a quarter of an inch seam allowance, I'm just gonna stitch these two ends together. When we do that, this is what you end up with, and then you're just gonna reach inside and flip it so that the pretty side of the fleece is now showing. All right, and that's gonna be the body of our bow. Now we need something to cinch it up right here in the middle to make it into an actual bow, right? So to do that, the same thing we just did, just with a smaller piece. So the one I've cut here, and you can make it out of the same fabric, or you can use a contrasting colored fleece, that would look cute as well. This measures three quarter inches by three inches in length, same thing, pretty sides touching, stitch it down and you're gonna end up with this. You're gonna flip that right side out as well and now all we need to do is basically feed the big one into the little one. I put the seam that we've sewn here towards the back so that my bow doesn't actually sew the uh, show the seam on the front side. So I'm gonna put both seams towards the back of my bow. I'm gonna fold this up and just pull it through there. It stretches a little bit, so just go ahead and do that and work it. You can now hand stitch this into place, but if you stitched it correctly, it should be snug enough to just hold the shape of that bow for you without a need to hand stitch it into place, okay? So there you can see our little bow, and you can pinch it, you can stitch it if you see it needs something else, but that looks really cute. And so there your bow is done. So you save this. I set it aside usually until the entire little pillow is complete and then I'll hand stitch it into place. So let's set the bow aside. Now let's work on the other little monster mouth in case you wanna do this pocket for a, a different type of a pillow, right? So to do this one, we've cut the exact same mouth or pocket template here, but instead we've cut it out of two fabrics instead of just the one. We have the blue for the background, and then I cut out another one out of white. Now to cut these funky little teeth in here, you can see that you can just freehand cut it any way that you want to. I've done two different ways here. 
And what I do is I can, you can take a rotary cutter, you can take a pair of scissors, usually for cutting around these template pieces, both to cut out this part and to do the teeth, I recommend that you use a smaller rotary cutter, especially when you're cutting out the fabric pieces for the rounded edges, it's just easier to cut around it. Or if you don't feel too comfortable going around curves with a rotary cutter, feel free to use a pair of scissors as well. So let's cut into these teeth here, or into this white piece to make some teeth. And I just come into the side and just start cutting. Cut here. Cut here, a big tooth there. And then we can do some little ones. And so that now, so that it fits onto my mouth without covering up the entire blue section, what I do is I go back and I trim away some of it just to make it a little bit smaller. And that's gonna give us now a little gap here in between the two template pieces. So around the, the rounded edges, just trim it down a little bit. So that when we layer these teeth up, you can scoot this one over. Now we can see some more of the blue in between it, okay? Now to attach that to your teeth, what I like to use is my favorite little craft glue. It's called The Ultimate. It's a non-toxic glue and it works great fabric to fabric. So I would just do the white part down to the blue and just glue it into place. For this type of a project, there's no need to sew it. If you feel comfortable sewing it, go ahead and do it. But because I have so many points and edges and things like that for beginners, I would just recommend that you glue it into place and it works fine. I did that on this sample here. And once it's glued into place, then you can treat it just as the one pocket similar to how we did the pink one. So then we would just lay it on top and we're gonna stitch it into place. So I'm gonna show you how to do that with this pink one here. It's just, I think, a little bit easier to see. Let me grab some pins real quick. I'm gonna lay it right there. Here, this is my pretty side. Make sure that you're laying it on the pretty side of your fabric. Right here. I'm just gonna put a pin right down the center. And then about an eighth of an inch seam allowance right along the outside edge, just of the bottom curve. The top, you wanna leave it open because it's a pocket, right? So make sure that you backstitch at the beginning and at the end right here. So let's do that real quick. So there we have our little mouth pocket. Can we move that? And now what we need to add next is the little hanging loop. So this little tooth fairy pillow is designed so that you can hang it on the child's doorknob of their room. That way you don't have to try and fiddle under getting <laughs> into their pillows, right? Under their pillow. So instead just hang it on the doorknob. They can put their teeth in here and the same way you can put some money. If it's coins, it'll fit fine. If it's dollar bills, even better for them. And you can just roll it up and stick it right there. The pocket is not too narrow. It's pretty deep so you can fit something you know, pretty decent in there. And I feel like the, the teeth won't get lost either. They're not gonna fall out of there. So it's pretty snug with the fleece. So we're gonna do the little handle part here. And to do that, we just cut a piece of the same fleece. And this one measures half of an inch by six and a half inches in length. Now to add that here, we wanna go ahead and put it in place before we stitch the layers together. So to do that, I've laid it with the pretty side facing down towards the, the top of the fabric here. And I'm gonna get the ends and put them right here. So you see where this kind of creeps in like a heart shape? We're gonna put one on the inside, flat against the edge, and the other one on the other side. And then we're going to top stitch these into place really nice and close to the top edge of the white fleece fabric. So we have the front part done, our pocket is in place. We're gonna grab the other side, the back side of our tooth pillow here, and we're gonna lay them pretty sides touching with the loop sandwiched in, and the loop should be going in that direction, okay? Because when we flip it right side out, it's gonna pop out and then it'll be hanging at the top correctly. So we're gonna lay this pretty sides touching, then you can take your wonder clips, and you're gonna wanna clip all the way around we're gonna stitch this and flip it right side out so you do wanna leave an opening. And I always like to leave an opening on a flat edge. And so I'm gonna show you where I recommend that you do it. The flattest part here, it's pretty nice and curvy. Down here, they're really nice and flat edges. So if you leave a two and a half inch opening right around here, that's gonna work out perfectly for you. And then you just wanna take your time going around those curves and we are gonna use a quarter of an inch seam allowance.
All right. So now that we have our opening here, we can flip the whole thing right side out. But before we do that, we definitely want to go in and clip our curves. Whenever you sew around curves like this, you want it to come out and have all your uh, all the, the seams on the outside when we're stuffing it with the fiber fill. We want everything to be nice and round. So to do that, we need to come in here to the inside curves and clip. You want to make sure that you're not clipping your actual stitch line. But you do want to do some really close stitches, I mean really close snips without cutting into the stitches, okay? So just clip, clip, clip all around that small interior curve. And when you pull it like this, it should stretch nicely for you, all right? Around the outer curves, I usually will just trim away a little bit of the excess bulk so that I can get nice points, right? When I go to turn this out. And then we're gonna repeat the same thing all the way up here in this other inside curve. Now to do this one, I just clip in close to here and if you want to, a few more along the sides. And the fleece is quite bulky, so you can always use pinking shears if you were working with a more lightweight fabric. But the pinking shears, this is a little bit bulky, I think, for the pinking shears. So stretch it out, make sure it's going nice and good. And then around these curves, you can kind of leave it since our seam allowance was pretty small. But if you flip it out and you see that it's not really curving that well on you, flip it back out this way and then trim this down a little bit more. But otherwise, we're ready to flip the whole thing right side out. And so you're gonna do that carefully. And when you do that, here's my sample that's done. You're gonna end up with something that looks like this. It's flipped out, we have our pocket sewn into place, and we have our loop. So the only thing we have left to do is to stuff it and to embellish it. So we have our little bow here. I'm gonna grab some fiber fill. This is what we use to stuff, like stuffed animals with and stuff. And so what I recommend is that you grab first smaller pieces and you fill it in to the smallest points first, okay? Because if you start filling it into the big space, it kind of fills up and then you can't get to those smaller spaces. So whenever you're making stuffed animals or any type of softies like this, you definitely want to push that fiber fill far into the pointiest parts. So whether they're legs, arms, ears, whatever it is that you're making. And then you're just gonna do that little by little and stuff the entire thing. And once it's done and fluffed to exactly how puffy you want the whole thing to be, then all you need to do is go back and hand stitch this opening shut, which is real simple, just use white thread. I have a needle and thread here. And I just will tug on this, because remember the fleece is gonna roll to the wrong side. So if you tug on it, it's already gonna roll the seam allowance inside. So when it does that, then I kind of just pinch it between my two fingers here and just do a simple whip stitch. I'm just gonna show you a sample so you see how I would do it. I would come from the inside so that the knot of my fabric is inside the pillow, and then you can just whip stitch it. So go from one side to the other. The, the fleece is so fluffy that the thread is not even gonna be showing. So you can go right into the fleece itself and just take your whip stitches like this and tie a knot when you get to the end. After the entire, the entire little tooth fairy pillow is done, then you can go back and embellish it any way that you want to. So let me show you some of the things I've done here. For the bow, I just, the same thread and needle, I went ahead and hand stitched this right into place. And then for the eyes, I used my favorite craft glue. Where is it? Right here. And the same way that we glued the white part of the teeth to the little monster mouth, you can go ahead and glue buttons as eyes. This glue holds really well for gluing plastic to the fabric, so that works really well for these little buttons. We have a variety of buttons here. You can get crazy and do, for a monster face, I think one big button and a little one for two eyes, that would look really cute as well. And then I even did some little googly eyes on this guy here. So play around with it, feel free to customize it and make it your own, use your child's favorite colors, favorite characters, and get really creative with this project. So I hope that you enjoyed it. I think it's a fun little project, even your kids can help you make it. And if you enjoyed the video tutorial, hit it with the thumbs up below, share it across the different social media sites, and don't forget to upload some pictures so I can check out what you're making from the Crafty Gemini Creates tutorials. Thanks again for watching. Remember to click the subscribe button, and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.